So apparently, Tarosso is Italian for treasure. But who is Tesoro and what are they doing that's different to everyone else? And how can they improve your boat life? And <laughs> did anyone else think testosterone when they saw this name? Was it just me? Anyway. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about who I think would be well suited to this boat and who perhaps might not be well suited to this boat. Um, I'm trying to get the pronunciation right. Or some of these Italian or European names, I really struggle. So if you know how to pronounce it correctly, please just pop it down there in the description below. I'm not deliberately trying to butcher your name. I just don't really know how to say it. Um, so from Spain, Alicante, I believe they uh, built down in the southern part of Spain there, and the name is Italian. Um, vacuum infusion, Mediterranean style, you gotta say it's an Italian vibe uh, of a day boat. And this style of boat is getting incredibly popular um, in Australia now, and for good reason. So in this video, we're gonna go right through the boat, downstairs and on deck. We'll talk about all the features. There are a couple of really unique ones, one of which we're standing on right now. And then because it's Dan's boat life, I'm Dan Jones, g'day. Uh, we're going for a drive. Uh, it's an awesome day. It's a beautiful, classic Sydney. It's not summer, it's winter, but summer's coming kind of day. And you're invited to come with us. That'll be a separate video to this one. I'll leave a link and all that good stuff. So first thing, is this extendable swim platform that we're standing on right now. Um, as you probably notice, we have outboards. You can option this boat to go for the inboards. So you can go for uh, twin 300s up to twin 440s. So they're Volvos on the inboard stern drives, or you can do the outboards as we have right now. You can have the option to go from twin 300s, we're running the 350s, and you can go all the way up to the 450Rs. We got over 38 knots with these babies today so that was a lot of fun and at seven and a half tons vacuum infused hull she feels strong she feels light she is what i'm going to say a lively hull so if you're looking for a driver's boat this boat is definitely going to do that for you it's quite enjoyable to get along and boogie if that's what you desire so 350 is not a bad match 30 38 knots if you want to go i would assume from what i felt if you had the 450s i reckon this is a 45 not maybe a smidgen more in the right conditions boat. So again, if that's important to you, yeah, you do you. But this is just such a sick solution and I'm just gonna show you two things that it can do uh, right now. Obviously, um, with outboards, the number one complaint for a lot of people was not having access or not having a luxurious transom and the ability to back in, board people on and off the back of the boat or get in and out of the water. But this has resolved it in quite a sensible manner. Uh, because I have seen these platforms before. J&J designed one on a previous brand of boat I used to sell back in my sales days, but it was on a track that went up and down and half the track sat in the water, which just is not very good for longevity. The design of this one sits out of the water. When the boat is at rest, all of the moving parts and the, the metal that I have seen is actually sitting out of the water. So that just seems logical to me. Now just stay there. I'm gonna turn it on because I'm just gonna do this. Oh, wait a sec, it switched itself off, boom, on. Okay, so look at this. Now, visualize yourself coming into a fixed dock. Look at how high that goes. 200 or 400 kilogram capacity, you can choose. I actually don't know why they give you that option. I feel like you would just want the heavier one. But coming into a fixed dock, you don't have a lot of uh, space or it's, it's, it's a great distance or you just have short legs like me. Isn't that great? It uh, gives you safe access for people to board the boat when you're backing in. It gives you something to jump off, run and jump, have a good time. And it's just a pleasant place to hang out. It also serves the function of getting the platform up and out of the way if you were in really rough water. Now, it wasn't necessary today. We did take the boat in the ocean and go through a few waves, but it really just wasn't necessary so that's just you know something to pay attention to 
also allows you to trim the engines up and out of the water. So that's another important thing. So serving dual functions, I like that. Nobody else is doing that in this med style that I have seen at the moment. So that's unique for these blokes, uh, guys and girls, I should say. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. Now, if you wanna get from side to side, this is the most realistic way to transit across. We'll see some others, but you can't miss the Sun Lounge. So this is what you would expect on a med day boat like we have right now. So this is one uh, sort of setting, if you like. So this is how much space you have. You probably get four people across the back here, but you can also maneuver these. So down, I'm not sure what the correct way is, but I think you can, you go like that and that, and it gives you more space should you need. And then you've got the dining area, which we'll get to in a second. You do have the kid, in, kid and doggy doors just there. It's enough, it'll stop a dog or a child. I think if you had really, really young kids, you just wanna have a responsible adult on this boat because I would hate to think, uh, you know, some kid falling out the back there. I can sort of imagine if you're, you know, maybe in your 50s or something and your kids are young teenagers and they're active and you wanna do the wing dinging and set up with all the toys, uh, just having an awesome platform, this, is going to be an exciting boat for you. So I see that really being a, uh, the, the demographic of person that would be um, most benefiting from a style of boat like this. If you disagree, leave a comment, let me know. So we've got the pop-up cleats just here. They've got rope protectors. This just here is actually a special device for popping the fenders in. So they're quite cool. And they also have a rope protector. We've got the hot and cold swim shower just on the starboard side there. And I'm standing on, and all these uh, gunnels are flexi teak, not real teak. So that's really good for longevity and maintenance. Um, just tucked in underneath here, there's actually a diesel in. And you go, why, why would we have diesel down? These are outboards. Because we've got a Jenny, we've got aircon. So it's quite uh, possible to overnight in hot climates on this boat. Um, that's the breather for the tank, that's the diesel in. And then we have two manually operated bilge pumps and there's electric overrides for those as well. Port side aft is our shore power in. And then we get into the middle or the heart of the boat, which is the entertainment station. So Marcus, come up and check all this out. So, you know, these styles of boats are really just moving your uh, balcony or your fancy living room from your lovely waterfront house to the water. Um, or maybe you haven't got a waterfront house, maybe you've got a fancy house up the hill there somewhere. So it really is about um, having wonderful experiences with your mates and setting up around a big table. And that's the vibe they create. They are movable tables like we see they serve multiple functions it gives you a little bit of space if you need to get up and go to the toilet it's somewhere to hold some drinks it's a grab handle as well and then when you're doing the whole lunch thing you can get you know eight people sitting around this table these people here are protected from the sun these people here it's half and half however because the trailing edge of this t-top here finishes right here there is a shore shade so that electrically deploys quite neatly from out of here so it's completely hidden and it's quite stylishly done and then it bays everyone at the back of the boat uh, protects it gives them protection from the sun so next thing this t-top it doesn't rattle around. We just bashed through a couple of waves and it was very impressive. Vacuum infusion. So what that means is they're, they're pulling the resin through the glass and it's just the most efficient way to do it. Gives you strength and it keeps the weight down. Um, the roof itself, it's just a stylish number. You've got your navigation lights, horn, aerial VHF and a little uh, all around white light on the mast aft and that's a dark gray. I believe you have quite a few options for upholstery and colors on this boat. So from what you're seeing right now, you don't have to do this. You can be flexible and do what you choose. Petrol in just here on starboard. And then we have uh, the first of our many high quality speakers that dotted around the boat. There's actually one underneath the sun lounge aft too. So that's gonna reverberate some sound from there. And then one on either side here and here. This was the control for the platform which also goes down into the sea. So I'm not gonna do it because I don't like getting platforms wet when it's not necessary, but you can drop it down and step your way up out of the sea. But there's, on, on top of that, there is a deployable telescopic swim ladder centrally mounted in there. So come up and have a look here, Marcus, so everyone can see. Um, this table here, 
will also drop down. Um, and aft of the table, instead of having a garage, uh, we have a, a technical space and a storage area. So that actually hinges up uh, electrically. So you just operate it with these buttons here and here. And all your, not all, some of your fender storage is back here. Your generator is back here and access to all the systems plus plenty of storage. So it is um, a, a pretty good solution, but obviously if you went for the inboard version, that's where the motors would be. So that's what's going on there. Underneath these seats here and here is quite big storage there on gas struts. Um, the backrest is quite high. I think for sitting here all day, I would want a couple of throw cushions. I'd probably just keep them downstairs just for some lower back support because otherwise you're on a real right angle here. Those ones not really necessary because it's quite comfortable with the angle just there. And even if you're sitting here, like me at 5'7", I'm not banging my head on this. If you are quite a tall person, you might risk walloping your head on that. So just pay attention and maybe put the tall people on the side. And then you have some LED down lights directly over the table. So if you wanted to do an evening uh, uh, you know, meal, it, it's possible because you see what you're doing. So that's cool. So uh, making our way to the helm, we've got four drink holders. They're all illuminated and drained. That's the switch there for getting into the storage, which I spoke about. This is one of the few fridges that we have on board. So this is the isotherm deep drawer fridge. We have another optional one on the port side. Come around on this side, Marcus, and I'll, let's show everyone because the port side's got some extra functions. Uh, because we've got the Jenny, we can have a little cooker. So this is just electrical oper electrically operated. Then we've got the tap here. I don't know if that's hot and cold. Can't tell. Um, the swim shower at the back is. This nice little bit of timber here, you could probably put a few things or use it as a cutting board for doing your lemons and your limes. And this is the optional second fridge just here. So it's all quite functional. And I found that was uh, quite secure going through the waves because sometimes on some of these day boats, these things don't have the latches. Then you go through a wave and it wants to pop open, which is just annoying. Um, but that one has the latch, so it's okay. Another down light over here. So again, if you were cooking of an evening, it's gonna be quite possible. Now let's check out the helm. So you come over here, Marcus, and look back here so everyone can appreciate this. Um, one of the, uh, before I get to the helm, this we have forward supports for the T-top. So just pay attention to that if you are looking at a big med day boat. If you don't have the forward supports, you really want to test the boat in some bumpy water because um, there is a lot of weight for these structures and they will vibrate around a little bit. It could be annoying and long term, maybe not good for the, for the structure itself. So um, if it doesn't have it, whatever boat you're looking at, just test it or watch my videos because I've probably already done it. So um, standing here at the helm, we are at an elevated position. So we go up a step of about six inches. So for me at 5'7", I have clear visibility through the Perspex windscreen just here. And I've got, yeah, so it's, I've got that much space over my head because the roof itself um, above the driver's position, there's actually extra headroom. There's a structural uh, member just here, which is in between the two seats. So that's not gonna interfere with you. So I would say people of like 6'3", probably. I don't really know. I'm not sure what it's like up there, but you're gonna have uh, you know, plenty of space for taller people. Just pay attention because of this windscreen design, the taller you get, the more wind you're gonna have in your face. If you choose to stand, you can always assume this position if that's more comfortable or sit down uh, or just wear sunnies because you know that's what I would do. But anyway, the helm itself, what can you say? She's good looking. She doesn't have too much glare because of the darker colors. We've got leather wrapped grab handles on either side, um, which you would use. Yeah, that's that seems okay. Um, the ergonomics of the helm is probably uh, you know, one of my preferred designs, I've got to say, because I like having, um, I like dedicating hands to different operations. I don't really like having the trim tabs on the same size side as the throttle, because then my throttle hand, which is the most important hand and should really always stay there, uh, could have to leave the throttle and do something else. So with this design, having my steering hand on the wheel, which can then leave the wheel, go to the trim tabs or leave the wheel and go to the thrusters, means I'm in full control and my important hand can stay here 
or rest just here if I'm using it in single lever mode to go through some waves. So that's all uh, safe in my opinion and, and would be my, my, my preferred way to design a helm if you're gonna be doing it like that. We've got the um, trim assist just here that can be auto or manual. You can do the button start, but we've got the keys uh, underneath here as well. So you do you. A place for your phone just here that's drained and you can put a couple of phones in there i reckon so that's that's all good to see um, we can have two big panels up here they're set in to the dash so they're flush and they're touch screen and then we've got this carbon base just here for all our boat systems uh, including the anchor operation two more drink holders on the port side a grab handle which may be useful in a seaway and our vhf just here and you do also have a footrest. So for the driver and the navigator or passenger on starboard, they can utilize that. The person on port, not so much because, oh, I guess you're good with your right foot. That's okay, but you lose a little bit because we've got the companion way. We're gonna go down there in a second, have a look. These seats, let's get in and have a look at these. So we've got the flip up bolsters. They give you quite a lot of a lower back support. If you had a, a bigger bum, you'd still have more space, so that's okay there. And I feel like this is a designer helm that's gonna suit larger people because we have quite a lot of space between the, the wheel and the helm because this is also adjustable, so you can create even more. So if you're a bigger bloke or girl, um, or you've just been enjoying the beers too much and you need the extra space, can do. So that's, that's not a problem. And I like having the two passenger seats so you can be quite social Let, let's face it this is a social boat got a little bin just under here um, this is this would be where i would put you know handbags um, that sort of stuff even though we can put some phones here i'd probably um, when you get on for the day everyone's got their, their duffel bag so that you can throw all them downstairs take out your phones and the things that you're going to use uh, regularly for the day and stick them in here so they're just easy to access uh, did I miss anything? A couple more down lights across here so we can illuminate this area when you're at rest. I wouldn't have them on when you're underway because you ruin your night vision. And we've got courtesy lights along the deck, forward and aft, um, which we're going to see as we make our way forward because this is another one of the unique things in, uh, that I've seen on this boat. Um, up the two stairs, and you do have some courtesy lights on there and these big speakers on either side. This is the forward stereo control. We have a midships stereo control as well, so you can control the vibe. But look at this. Look at what they've done up here. This is, this is unique. This is really fun. You know, this is, that's the idea of a boat like this. You can just get everyone around here um, rather than having you know, the table vibe like some boats go or the centrally mounted sun lounge. They've just created the whole thing into one massive day bed, which is very, very pleasant. Now I know what you're asking, how do you get out of the sun? They have thought of that. So there are two carbon fibre poles which slot into here and the same on starboard and they're stored down aft, just underneath that sun lounge and their own little holders. And then we have a huge big mesh shade which can protect this area. So you know, this time of year, winter, you wanna get some sun, no worries. But obviously in summer when we do need to uh, knock down on the UV, can be done and also pay attention even all the way forward we still have fender holders you just have a look on this side so the fender little thing we did goes in there so if you're doing med mooring and you need a fender all the way forward they've they've thought of that as well so drink holders all the way around so it really is a, a fantastic party space and these cushions could just stay in place because they they didn't want to move because i noticed they're all held in with bolt ropes uh, so the wind's not going to catch them and take them out of position. So it's, it's not a problem. So forward drop down cleats up here. I saw the midship cleats were optional on this boat. So you need to choose them uh, if you want them. But, but stick the camera down here, Marcus, and have a look. I like the design of this because we have more fender storage in the bow. And they've also hidden the motor away from all the mess. So for longevity, I think that is actually quite clever because there's gonna be salt water, there's gonna be mud and sand making its way into this part, but to keep the motor on the starboard side sealed and away from it, that's good. 
you can see this is the hydraulic ram that deploys the bow roller just there. Um, we did do it and seemed to be enough swing room because it didn't clip the bow. You do need to pay attention for these flat stem day boats, whether you have this distance correctly done because if the anchor is swinging, uh, you're going to hit and chip the bow. So um, this one was fine, it didn't have a problem, but always when you're looking at boats, just pay attention to that because if they don't get that distance right, you're going to be paying to fix the fiberglass chips. So forward facing, two uh, side windows just here. They're flush, neatly done, perspex. And this is actually a see-through window in here, which is all part of this one piece, uh, which we're going to see downstairs. So come with me now. Just appreciate the curvature of this and notice that it hasn't distorted when you look through it. Sometimes that's hard to achieve with perspex. But come on down, let's, let's check out the cabin because I think you'll be surprised at the amount of space they've, they've managed to get down here on a 40 footer. Sliding companion way, stainless steel here. It, it needs a little stopper, that, that would be an easy install, but you've got teak and then I think these are teak stairs and down into this feels like a light oak interior. Um, come on down, come and get the vibe. This is, you know, we're on a 40 foot boat. Uh, some of these midday boats are up to 43 feet that we're essentially competing with. Um, but the vibe I get down here is very doable. Remember, you know, we have a generator. We can air condition, air condition this space. And this uh, being the, the primary sleeping spot is quite pleasant. Just come in a little bit closer, Marcus, and just appreciate these windows because you've got, from my uh, position here, I have views out to port and starboard. I could open those windows should I wish. I've got a place to put my phone. I've got padding all around, so it's quite comfortable to sit up, read a book, put your phone just there. You got USB and 240, including your light switches, all operated from bed, so you don't have to leave bed. It's a two meter long bed, 150 centimeters wide. So, you know, tall people are catered to uh, in this situation and lots of strip lighting. So you can sort of set the mood as you see fit. If you want everything on or want to create a, a bit of a vibe, you can do. You've got speakers there and there, air conditioning here, a small amount of storage just here on the starboard side with a little ledge on the top for putting things, little nooks and crannies. What I'm taking away from this is they haven't wasted any space available, like everything has been used. This mirror just here is actually a TV, so that's kind of cool. So you can you know, get down here and uh, watch TV. But when you step out of bed, this is curved. You can stand up straight away. So here I'm standing and I have, you know, quite a, a decent amount of space over my head. And now I'm underneath those windows and opening hatches, uh, which I was pointing out from the bow. So you can have those open, but we've also got the two port lights on port and starboard. And then we also have these long Lumar opening windows on this side and in the head, which we're gonna to go to in a second. But underneath the bed, we have a pull out drawer. So you could put a few things in here. It's not huge, but you could put you know, a blanket if necessary. The better storage is these ones. So if you are actually going out uh, for an evening, you could throw your bits and pieces in there. It really is you know, one or two nights on a boat like this. You're not gonna be focusing on overnighting. It's, it's primarily a day boat. Um, but you've got your full coffee set up here. So this is a, an espresso thingamajiggy with the coffee stuff in there and that pulls out. It's even got holders for the cups. So that's all quite organized, which I would expect being European. So we've got the breakers, we've got the DC, we've got the AC, all just accessible from here. The panel itself, including the battery switches are quite self-explanatory. So if you're new to this sort of thing, it really is just house, port and starboard, pretty simple. Um, these are all marked in English, very easily done, sure, you know, uh, ship sure, and then you can just check the power on all of your batteries. We've got six batteries in total, um, two house, two crank, and two bow thruster. The house are obviously bigger than the rest. The, you know, the others are all 150 amp hour. Then you can operate your, your Jenny from here. There's your windlass breaker just there. And then we've even got some more charging after, which we'll have a look at in a second. So that's all. Pretty simple. Turn the power on, put the keys in, drop the engines down, and uh, you're ready to rock and roll. So, if you got kids or mates, we got more accommodation. So this is this is also pretty cool. And these beds are two meters long. 
So 80 centimeters wide, but two meters long. So again, tall people have been accommodated. We've got a little bit of storage on the starboard side here. This one is, is actually just uh, for, for show because you've got air conditioning behind it. We've got strip lights. We have deep storage underneath these beds, perfect place for life jackets. There was also more storage accessible under the main bed as well. And then the bow thruster and bow thruster operation is forward of that and accessible. Um, we got these drawers here, little bedside table, got the power, uh, reading lights, deeper storage over here on the port side. So you can put a few things in here and here. It really is a case of like, um, get on board with your duffel bags, empty your stuff out of the bags into the lockers. Then I would actually um, roll the bags up and stuff them underneath the beds. And that's how I would organize these, uh, my space, so to speak. Easy access into the bilge with some bilge pumps in there. And come on, come on around here and check out this head because it's, it's also quite impressive. It's a, it's a full wet area with a separate stand up rain head shower. So we've got this wonderful tech space. It's not the hugest shower space, but it's certainly doable. And we've got the rain head, and then we've got this thing with jiggy that goes up and down, and you can operate that. We've got the hot, cold, hot and cold mixer there, and space for your soaps just in there. And then the head compartment itself is bigger, but perfectly doable. So people of all heights are gonna be fine here because we've got really good leg room, um, enough width and plenty of height, and one, two opening hatches so you can always keep this area ventilated we've got a little storage drawer just under here a deep ledge hidden out of the way two more just under here so everyone can have those little heli handsome toiletries bags or whatever toiletries bag you choose and then a small sink and a mirror decent sized mirror here with enough hooks well at least for three towels just there so it's all pretty good i'm impressed so that's, that's the boat, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that was of some value to you. Um, so who do I think is good for this boat and who maybe not so good for this boat? If you are an active, uh, perhaps in the middle of your life, uh, you know, winning at life, obviously, and your kids are possibly in those teenage type years, you're really gonna see a lot of value out of something like this. Um, and if you are that sort of person who wants to create an amazing space and just take it to different destinations and have a platform to enjoy yourself, you're really gonna get a lot of value from something like this. It's practical with the outboards, it's fast, it's stylish, and it is that cool platform. Who's not gonna get huge benefit out of this? Well, if you're really old, you know, if you're not so stable on your feet and you're worried about falling out the back, maybe not your vibe, or just be careful. And if you've got really young kids, you know, we've got the kid and doggy door there, but there are stonking great big outboards here. If you've got a two year old running around the decks, you really want to just be onto it. Um, so I would just be uh, consider your level of experience. If you've someone or a family that's done lots of boating before, then maybe you're fine with that. If you're totally new and you've got really young kids, maybe uh, just consider the safety factor before jumping into something like this. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm impressed. It's the first one in the country. The construction looks good. The drive is a lot of fun. And that's going to lead me to the next point. We are going for a drive. You're invited. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave a link on the screen right now, somewhere on the screen. It's a hell of a lot of fun. So you've been watching Dan's Boat Life. Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a like if you enjoy this content. I'll see you over in the other video.